Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at what is meant by a polygon of constraints when referring to inequalities. So, in your notebook, please put today's subtitle, which is Polygon of Constraints. Just one word of warning. In order to successfully understand this video, you will need to have prior knowledge of how to solve systems of two variable first degree inequalities. If you lack that knowledge, please refer to the video in my collection about how to solve systems of two variable first degree inequalities. With that being said, you shall already be aware that the solution to a system of two variable inequalities is represented by the shaded region that is common to the solutions of each of the individual inequalities. In a polygon of constraints, that knowledge is important because the solution to a system with more than just two inequalities is the shaded region that is common to all of the inequalities. And very commonly, the shaded region that is common to all of the inequalities forms a polygon. Let's take a look at the shaded region of a system that involves more than just two inequalities. For your first example, I would like you to put down the following. Determine the polygon of constraints for the following systems, which contains four inequalities. In other words, when I'm asking for the polygon of constraints, I'm asking for the shaded region that is common to each of these individual four inequalities. At first glance, it looks like we have a lot of work to do because it seems like we have four different lines to draw. In fact, only two of them really require any work. Just the first two. The last two do not require that much work because those lines are very easy to draw. First things first, let's do the legwork involved in solving for the first inequality written in black. Let's begin by first drawing a line for that rule. y equals negative x plus 4. You may use any preferred method of drawing that straight line. I'm going to use my preferred method, which is to simply plug in some random x's and or y values in order to get two points to draw my straight line. So, completely randomly, I'm going to plug in how about x equals 0. So, plugging it in, that will give me y equals negative of 0 plus 4, and therefore y equals 4. So, one of my points on the line is located at 0 and 4. And let's get a second one. How about completely randomly, I will plug in, how about 0 into the y? So, y equals 0. Let's see what happens. So, 0 is equal to negative x plus 4. And that means that x is equal to 4. And that gives me a second point located at 4 and 0. And finally, let's pick a test point to see where we need to shade the region. The point 0, 0 is not on this line, so that makes the point 0, 0 very convenient to test. Remember, no matter which point on the Cartesian plane you choose to test, you must let me know. So, I'm going to test 0, 0. Let's see what happens. So, 0 small than or equal to negative of 0 plus 4. Let's see what happens to our statement. Simplifying, we get that 0 is smaller than or equal to 4. And the statement turns out to be true. Excellent. That takes care of the solution for the first inequality in our system. Next. Let's tackle the solution for our second inequality in the system. First, let's start by drawing the line for that rule. x minus 2y equals to 4. Again, you may use your preferred technique to draw a straight line. I'm going to stick with simply plugging in random x values and y values to get myself two points. So, I'm going to try, how about x equals to 0? Let's see what happens. So we get 0 minus 2y is equal to 4. 
simplifying gives us negative 2y equal to 4. Therefore, y is equal to negative 2. And that gives us our first point, located at 0 and negative 2. Let's get a second point. How about, completely randomly, I plug in 0 into the y. So 4, y equals to 0. Let's see what happens with that. I will get x minus 2 times 0 equal to 4. Simplifying, that gives me x is equal to 4. And that gives me a second point located at 4 and 0. And finally, let's figure out where we need to shade for this particular inequality. The point 0, 0 is not located on this line. Therefore, it makes the point 0, 0 a very convenient point to test. Remember, no matter which point you choose to test, you must let me know. So I'm going to test 0, 0. And let's see what happens to the inequality. So plugging in 0 and 0, I get 0, subtract, 2 times 0, smaller than or equal to 4. Simplifying, I get that 0 is smaller than or equal to 4. And that turns out to be a true statement. Therefore, the shaded region for this inequality will be the region that contains our test point 0, 0. This is pretty much all the legwork we need to do, because if you take a look at the last two inequalities, the line x equal to 0 and the line y equals to 2 are both very easy to draw without showing much work. So we're just going to draw them in our grid. To accommodate the lines and solutions representing these four inequalities in the system, we're going to need a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. Alright, with your grid ready to go, let's draw the lines representing the solutions for each of the inequalities one by one. Let's start with the first one, which will be drawn in black. Using the random points that we got, the two points for that first line are located at 0 and 4. I'll put one right there. And the other one was located at 4 and 0. Let's put it right there. Using your semi-artistic skills, connecting those two points should produce a following line. Now, as far as the solution goes for the inequality, using our test point 0, 0, we found the statement to be true. Therefore, the shaded region for this inequality will be the region that contains 0, 0. Now, rather than actually shading it in, which will create a hot mess because we've got four inequalities to deal with, we would just probably need to draw an arrow pointing to the region which would have been shaded in. So in this case, putting a whole bunch of arrows pointing in this direction. And that tells me that the shaded region is down here. Next, let's draw the line that represents our second inequality. I'll be doing in green. First, let's put down the two random points that we found. One of them was located at 0 and negative 2. So that will put it down here. And the other one was located at 4 and 0. So that will overlap the first line right here. Once again, using your semi-artistic skills, connecting those two points should produce a line that looks like that. And the shaded region corresponding to that inequality is the region that contains our test point which we used before, 0, 0. Again, instead of actually coloring it in, which will create one hot mess, we're just going to put arrows to indicate where the shaded region would have been if we were to color it in. So, draw a bunch of arrows that point in this direction. The direction of the region that contains your test point. In our case, 0, 0. There we go. Next, let's draw the line 
that represents our third inequality, the x bigger than or equal to zero. Well, the line x equal to zero is simply the line that goes straight up in the following manner. Drawn in red, as you can see, that line represents when x values are all equal to zero. Now, how about the shaded region for that inequality? Well, the inequality states that x must be bigger than zero. Therefore, in your Cartesian plane, it represents the area that is to the right of that line. Because anything to the right of that line is bigger than zero. And finally, let's draw the line that represents the final inequality, y smaller than or equal to two. Now the line y equals to two is easy enough to draw. Once again, using your semi-artistic skills, the line y equals two is shown in the following blue line. And to answer the actual inequality, we want the shaded region that will cause y to be smaller than 2. Logically, that will be the region that's below this line. Anything under this line is smaller than 2. With all of our lines drawn, we're ready to discuss the solution to the system of all these four inequalities. What we're looking for is where all the shaded regions converge. We need to look carefully to see where all the arrows are pointing to. If you can train your eyes well enough to look at this very carefully, you'll see that all the arrows are converging in this location. And this, as you can see, forms a shape. And we call that shape the polygon of constraints. And the last thing that's usually done when it comes to identifying our polygon of constraints is to identify the vertices of this polygon. Again, training your eyes to look carefully at the polygon will help you detect that this polygon has four vertices. There's one located right here. And that has the coordinate of 0 and negative 2. There's another one located right here. And that is located at the coordinate 4 and 0. The next coordinate is located right here. And if you look carefully, that is the coordinate 2 and 2. And finally, the last vertex of this polygon is located right there. And that is located at the coordinate 0 and 2. And that's what we call the vertices that belong to the polygon of constraints. Now in this particular example, we were very fortunate that the vertices of the polygon were all very, very visible and identifiable. However, in other examples, it could happen that one or more vertices are not as easily identifiable, simply because they fall between grid lines. In those cases, you have no choice. You have the mundane task of solving a system between the two lines involved at that particular vertex. The worst case scenario would be if all the vertices of a certain polygon were not readily identifiable. You can see how long that procedure would take. Suppose that you had a polygon with four vertices and you had to solve four different systems to find those vertices. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to what is known as a polygon of constraints. In its simplest definition, it simply represents the shaded region that is common to all the inequalities involved in a system.